everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Brief Talk podcast. We are back with you with another brief tale. This time we have someone that I'm pretty sure nobody knows about. It is Rob. Welcome, Rob. Hey, Tim. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for coming on. First off, since I know, other than myself, very little people know who you are. So just give us a brief overview of who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my name's Rob. Uh, I live in the Midwest. I'm in my early 40s. I am straight, married with a couple kids. So yeah, I, that's, uh, I, I don't have any, I'm not, you know, on social media or really anything. So nothing really to plug, but just, and you, you put out the call for some listeners and for brief tales. And um, I've been, uh, I really like underwear and kind of been into it for a couple decades now. And so I thought it'd be fun to come on and, and talk some underwear. Nice. We do definitely love having people on who are a straight because we need more straight guys to come on and share their stories. And also, how did you find the podcast since you're not on social media? It always impresses me that people just randomly find it. Yeah. So um, I think I was just searching through, uh, you know, Apple Podcasts and I stumbled on the uh, one of the episodes of The Thong Show and I was like, surely this isn't what it looks like. It's not. And it, it was. It was, you know, guys talking about um, their love of underwear and thongs and like, what well, this is. I was not expecting to find anything like this. So I've been a pretty loyal listener now for, it's probably been, a, you know, a little over a year, year and a half, something like that. Oh, wow. I did not did not ask you how long you've been listening. So <laughs> That's amazing. No, I was listening to another podcast yesterday talking about podcasts. So how meta can you get on that? And one of the people said, you know, no matter what you're into, there is someone on a podcast talking about what you're into, whether it's sports, true crime, underwear, it's out there. And I had to agree. I'm like, yep, because we're doing underwear and we have more and more people just randomly searching the, because John our straight guy that's on most often, he mm-hmm. found it the same exact way. He searched men's underwear in iTunes, and we popped up. I think we're the only thing popped up. Probably true. That's that's more or less how I found it. And you found our podcast, and you started listening, and mm-hmm. realized there are tons of guys out there who feel exactly the way you do. Yeah, yeah. That's... And I was, and I did not know it was connected. I didn't know about you, but I was familiar with your blog as well. So I didn't know that until I tried listening to the blog. The you know you were you were behind both but um, yes so yeah I was I was familiar with that too oh wow read the blog and uh you're making my day here <laughs> I'm glad I could do that yes so when did you first discover your love of underwear yeah. what was your catalyst into this wonderful world of amazing underwear yeah. Um, I think, you know, I, I've listened to a number of these and I, my story is not too dissimilar from a lot of guys, but, um, we, you know, when I was a kid, we used to get that JC Penny catalog and, um, I would, you know, grab it when it wouldn't be noticed and sneak it off to my room. I just start looking, you know, the women's underwear, um, mm-hmm. just cause, you know, I'm just straight and a kid and, you know, that seemed exciting. And, um, uh, but then I'd flip over to the men's underwear and was, yeah, I probably saw it was, you know, probably the, uh, the jockey bikinis and stuff and really was like, man, when I get older, maybe that's the kind of underwear I want to wear. And so I, I always kind of had been interested in it as a kid, you know, and then growing up, I didn't really choose a lot of my own. I was very afraid of what people would think of me. So I mm-hmm. wore, uh, you know, growing up in the 90s and 2000s when boxers were all the rage. I, read, I wore boxers for a long time. Living with people or, you know, in locker rooms and stuff, I just would have been petrified to have worn anything else or to even ask my parents for something other than what was, you know, what I considered to be normal. But it wasn't until so I, I graduated college and pretty quickly after that, it, you know, was able to move into my uh, own apartment was felt kind of free to finally start exploring and really develop new love. Nice. And what did you go out and buy when you first got your own place? And Yeah. The first thing I went out and bought was just like the Hanes, like, you know, five pack string bikinis. Okay. And I put those on and I was like, I'm never wearing boxers again. Good. Um, yeah, exactly. And now I, I'm to the point I would never wear those <laughs> again. But at the time I was like, this is just so much better. And so that kind of s- took me down my uh, path of, of being like, okay, I, I don't like 
I, I want something with supports, but I also was really interested in having something just a lot more minimal coverage from what I was used to. And mm -hmm. um, that kind of, yeah, started me down that path. Good. No, you have to start somewhere. Yes. And I think most guys discover stuff at either like Target or Walmart and get it. But I did see on social media today, one guy started with Greg Home, and I was just like, whoa, that's, you win. That's quite the way to start. I was like, whoa, that's a way to come right out of the gate with some good stuff. No kidding. Most everyone I know starts off and either just discovers it or orders something. And, and now with Amazon, it's easier to order something super cheap. But, it's funny. I, re I remember too, when I picked up that pack, I was, this was before self-checkout as well. And so as I was checking out, you know, it's not the only thing I bought. I had to, you know, bury it with some other things, but I was like so nervous what the sales lady would think of me. The checker would think of me. I was, I was almost going to tell her like, oh, this is for like a, a bachelor party gag gift. And then I just realized I'm like, she doesn't care. No. <laughs> I'm the only one that cares about this. She doesn't care. Just let it be. No, most of them don't. And right. when you do it, they just don't even pay attention to mm -hmm. what you're buying. And that's one thing so many guys have an issue with because we have a large group of listeners who do not like to go in person and buy mm -hmm. just for that reason. And I'm just like, it doesn't matter. They don't care. And if you mm -hmm. go to an underwear store, they really don't. They'll oh, yeah. bring up whatever and be like, yeah, we don't care what you do with it. So, so I think a lot of guys, when you first get started, get in your head and be like, oh, Oh no, they're going to judge me. They're going to, and no, no, don't even, they're going to forget it. you by the end of the day. They're not going to, yeah. So and they have those on the shelves because people buy them. You're not the only person in the world buying it. So no, I kind of got, I ended up getting very used to shopping in person. I don't do it as much anymore. Doesn't, uh, but yeah, I, I used, I did get to the point that I got really used to them. I was like, you know, it is what it is. They're not going to remember. I don't care. And if they do, who cares? You're not going to see exactly them again. Right. That's exactly right. So, yeah, I, I've i always shopped in person. I prefer it over online, but now mm -hmm. it's just so easy to order online and get it in a couple of days as yes. opposed to – because living in the U.S., unless you're in probably a big urban city with a large gay population, you probably don't have an underwear store. Right, and we don't. Which is sad because mm -hmm. I think many, many people would shop at them. But, you know, all the ones I know are like, we have one here in Atlanta. I think there's some in D.C., Fort Lauderdale, Dallas, yeah. um, L.A., San, mm -hmm. I think San Francisco and Seattle. So, and of course in Mexico, but that's a whole different kettle okay. of fish. Yeah. But yeah. So what was the first really good pair you bought? You know, yeah. the, because we all have start out with. The okay pairs, but you know, mm -hmm. those okay pairs change our life and go, oh my God, like you said, I have been missing out. This is yes. what I need. But when you stepped up your underwear game, what do you remember the first good pair of pairs you bought? I, I do, I think for the most part, at least. So after, you know, buying those string bikinis, I think I had probably gone out and found the, you know, Joe Boxer ones as well. So I think mm -hmm. I, I ended up with a few different, you know, kinds of uh, that you would get at those kind of big box stores but i was really looking for something that had a smaller like side you know and so and there just wasn't anything like that in the stores so and i was also you know recently out of college so i wasn't making a lot of money so i was pretty budget conscious and looking for things that are on sale and i stumbled on ebay store and it was a woman that made men's underwear and um found she had some bikinis with you know it was the the like true spring side and kind of a smaller, you know, butt on it. And I was like, oh man, that's, that's exactly what I want. And so I put in an order from, for her and uh, I had no interest in, in wearing a thong. I thought those seemed, it seemed like it must be just incredibly uncomfortable. Um, I thought they were incredibly hot on women, but no interest on them on, for, for myself. But as I was checking out, she had a, a thong that was on sale for, uh, I think probably a few bucks. And I was like, well, sure, I guess why not? I'll just throw it in and try it. <laughs> so um, I remember getting that package and trying it on and then eventually just being like, well, okay, I guess I'll give it a shot. And uh, putting it on and it was by no means the the best song I owned. But I was like, wow, this is way better than I thought it would be. I actually really kind of like this. So that 
that kind of sent me then into the online world, you know, similar way. So I'm really pretty sure my first like really good pair of, uh, I mean, she made really good stuff, but also I, I think my first order from, an, you know, a real actual store was uh, from end to end. Ah. I couldn't tell you what exactly I got from them. That was quite a few years ago, but I'm due. I, I have been a fairly frequent customer of them over the years. And so I'm pretty sure that was my first. And I, I'm pretty sure I got a mix of probably bikinis and thongs from them. Oh, yeah. They make really good stuff. Of course, yes. we, we love them here at the podcast. Everyone does. Yeah, uh, they're great. So their their enhanced pouch is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Andrew did to get it, but it's up there with me. And he's all about, you know, showing off and having fun. And yeah. it has a time and place, as I and, say. But and, yeah. and I have always kind of been drawn to some, you know, bolder colors and patterns and stuff. And so they he certainly had, you know, they have that available and they've always kind of had that. Oh, yeah. and, and also at the same time was, I think, you know, a, a, in the underwear world reasonably priced and so that was another draw mm -hmm. for me for sure yeah it is that's the one thing i've always enjoyed is the colors and prints because i always said i always like the bold primary colors mm -hmm. as opposed to you know the classics so the classics have their place i yeah, just absolutely. prefer colors so like bold bright it makes me happy so do you have a favorite color uh, that's a good question. Uh, red is probably one of my favorite colors. Honestly, okay. I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for animal print as well. So oh. I, I enjoy those. But honestly, I, I'd like to have a variety. That's and good. So I don't so much have a f specific favorite color, but I just like to have, it, it usually is, is on the brighter end. And so I have probably a, a, at least several of, of the, a lot of different colors. So you have like the rainbow in your drawer then. I do. It's very, yeah, it's very much of a rainbow in, in That's my drawer. Awesome. And yeah. then Dan just came out with their snakeskin collection this week. So Yes, I saw that. Yeah. Um, I'm like you. I'm a sucker for animal print, any animal oh, okay. print. And uh -huh. I'm just like, I was like, I don't need this right now. I don't need this <laughs> I right know. now. <laughs> I can't look. I had the same conversation with myself too. It's like, I want them, but my budget and my wallet says no you yep. do not need them <laughs> and it's going to win out this time because yeah uh, I, sometimes i just hope maybe it'll uh maybe some of that'll last until the next sort of sale and then i can justify it, picking it up exactly i do that a lot of the times with the singlets and sure it's like because when they had the sale at christmas it was like 14 dollars for singlets and i'm like oh, mm -hmm. this is meant to be um that's well, and that's how I got into uh wearing tights as well, leggings was end to end sale. And so I work out at home a lot and I do you know the Peloton and, and whatever. And so I had been wearing you know just some shorts or you know, I have some uh padded shorts from from riding, um, yep. from outdoor riding and stuff. But I was like, you know what, I just don't want to keep buying these. And so the one of their sales they had tights on. Or the, yeah, their tights on sale for, I mean, it was like, I don't know, 12 or 14 bucks. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, sure, why not? Give it a shot. And I was like, oh, I actually really like <laughs> these. And I don't work out in the end, end ones a ton. I have a handful of them still because they're, they were the budget way to like to get in. Uh, but a sense moved on to, so, uh, you know, I've got a handful from LED Queens um, who, you know, I found out through the, or heard about through the podcast. And I have recently got some from Kapow as well. Oh, yeah. And so, um, like them as well. I actually had old one from two exist that I don't think that they sell anymore either. Oh yeah. Um, they did do that. Didn't they? Yeah. They had some for a while. And so I think they got on super clearance and probably would have bought more, but by the time I saw them, they were already pretty wiped out. Um, so yeah. Cause they the did ones... the whole active wear. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think when they came out, they were really expensive. Oh sure. yeah. But then it drops to, to super cheap when they were trying to get rid of them. But so I, I pretty much use the, the LED Queens and, and a compiler, the ones I usually work through. Well, the LED Queen one says are actually designs them to work out in. So mm -hmm. you can have the recovery and all that fun stuff. Yep. And then the Kapow are just, they are just fun. Oh my God. Yeah. I have a pair of actually leopard print ones. 
that they sent me many years ago. Oh, that's so, awesome. So I have those, and it's like, um, that's to show off. <laughs> Nothing yeah, wrong absolutely. with that. Not at all. But yeah, it's it's amazing that you've gone into tights as well. And have you been bold enough to go into swim briefs yet? Or I so yes. Um, so we used to have a hot tub. So I pretty much only exclusively wore either swim briefs or, or swim thongs in the hot tub. I have not. I've not really ever actually ventured out in public um, mm-hmm. in, a, in a swim brief. I think it would be more up to doing that potentially now. But I. I have some, you know, I, I'm not at my, uh, in my best shape of my life at this point. And so that's one of the things I'm trying to work towards. And so I, you know, I've kind of snuck out, I, you know, if we're at a, some place and they have a hot tub and I'm there at night and I'm by myself, you know, I'll wear a swim brief or a thong or something underneath my shorts. And so I'll take it off then if I'm alone, but I, I don't, I haven't ventured out into public yet. Well, takes time, especially in the straight world yes. and with the family. So you probably want to do it when, like when you and your wife are away. Right. Totally. Without the kids. So, yes. Because, you know, the kids will be like, eh, what are you wearing? Uh, yeah. 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 They're, kids are. Yep. <laughs> they're getting, getting pretty close to that age of having those opinions. So. <laughs> yeah. So do it on the adults only trip. That's when right. You go out. That's right. So that that's always a good thing, especially if you go to like Mexico or the Caribbean or somewhere like that, where it's like more diverse people than just Americans. Right. People don't even look at you. They're just like, whatever. Yeah. 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 There's a goal. So, so that's I'll have to work towards that for sure. Because we've had several straight guys over the years tell us that's when they were them. Like they went to a Mexican resort or they yeah. went to the Caribbean. And felt comfortable and felt amazing. And I'm like, good. Just wish we had that more here in the States. I agree. But whatever. (laughs) Whatever. So you have now gone on from this original pairs you got. Mm -hmm. Uh, So what has been your favorite styles recently and some of your favorite brands that you're wearing? Yeah. Yeah, So I I pretty much stick almost exclusively with thongs and bikinis. Um, so wear both both those styles. Um, the vast majority. I have a few pairs that are, you know, either brief or boxer brief just for, you know, various occasions, you know, going to the doctor's office or whatever. But the vast majority of what I have is falls into that is either, you know, thong, goose thing or, or bikini. So my favorite brands, like I still am a big end-to-end fan. I really like Aussie Bum and mm-hmm. their stuff and, and have, have had their stuff for a long time. Cox Ox. Um, yes. I definitely have a handful of the, you know, I King Skies uh, yeah. from Amazon. And so I, some of their stuff I really like and some of it is fine. Um, mm-hmm. I recently got a decent size order from JJ Malibu. And so I really like their their stuff the stuff i got from them i really like a lot i've tried a bunch of different stuff and so i i kind of like trying you know other brands or or you know branching out but the ones i come back to and do multiple orders from are probably yeah like and and aussie bone cock sucks like those are the ones i've ordered from for you know years and years and years awesome good brands very good taste in underwear thank you but uh, I have to go back to so you mentioned wearing it to the doctor. I wear whatever now. Yeah. Um, I wore, I have to go to the urologist and I wore a pair of pink, like bikini, pink string bikinis. Mm-hmm. And I know, and I usually have a male doctor, but this is the, a good nurse practitioner that's female. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure they saw the underwear and didn't even say a word. So yeah, I'm sure they've seen a whole lot worse. Oh, I'm sure. And I, I will wear like a bikini, but I, you know, I, it's, I usually keep it then to some more like muted colors or something along those lines. So it's, it's what you're comfortable in. I know yeah, many totally. people think about, Oh, I'm going to be seeing in my underwear today. I got to wear this. I'm just like, whatever. I'm wearing whatever now. Cause in high yeah. school, I used to wear shorts under my jeans. So I wouldn't have to change and show my bikinis. Okay. Even though there were three other guys wearing bikinis in the locker room and it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. I was just too nervous. I should have been like, whatever. Yeah. And then now I'm just like, I don't care. I hear you. I mean, I was the same kind of way of like, man, I just don't. I was so nervous. You know, it's one of those where 
going back, you know, a different level of confidence of probably would have made some different decisions, but oh, yeah. it is what it is. And yeah, here, well, you know, I've still had a lot of years of being able to enjoy underwear the way I want to enjoy it. So you just have to get to that level of comfort because when you're right. younger, you think everyone's out to judge you. They're going to say things about you. And then you realize really no one cares or the ones who do, as I always say, wish they could wear it and give you right. grief about it. And it's like, you wish you could wear it. That's right. So, yeah. So are there any current favorite pairs you wear or any current? Yeah. Um. So, I, I like I said, I mean, I'm a big fan of, I have, you know, the microfiber stuff from end to end. I like that. Like I said, I, I also really like the uh, animal print stuff. So I've got tiger print one from Cox socks that I, I like I, I don't really oh. like mesh underwear but it is a, but I really like one that's really comfortable I don't find mesh to be all that comfortable very often well it can um, be like a cheese grater yes exactly when it's bad that's what it's like mm-hmm. um so I you know recently I got I know that Indian just came out with a snake print but there was their last sale like the Christmas one there was a snake sort of print as well so I got that I like that one quite a bit I definitely have some like uh, leopard print from my King Sky and a few others. So I honestly, I like, I, I've got a pretty big collection and I like to rotate through. And um, so I have quite a few pairs that I, I wear, you know, I, I'll rotate through and do, you know, try to do 40, 60 pairs or something like that before I, you know, work, start working back through that list again. So nice. um, and, yeah. Cool. And how many, how many pairs roughly do you have in your collection? That's a really good question. I mean, I've got to be probably over a couple hundred. Okay. I don't know exactly. I haven't done it in quite some time. I've wow. done some pretty big purges in the past and, and got rid of some stuff. But, I, yeah, I'm probably pushing that. That's, that's a good-sized collection. That's bigger than most out there. Yeah, yeah. Cause... Well, when you've been doing it for a while, that helps, too. But Oh, yeah. And I don't like to I don't like to get rid of underwear. So, I, you know, there, I definitely have pairs in there that don't get worn very often but it's hard to get rid of them it's very i have some that i just refuse to get rid of because i love them so much Mm -hmm. even though i can't wear either a can't wear them anymore or b they're just like holding on and i'm like i can't get rid of this pair oh my god so many memories so many uh and you can't get them anymore because i have several pairs like that where it's like they don't make them anymore. The brand's gone out of business, and it's like I, oh. I have a couple from Undergear still. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, they they've held up great. Oh, I I do. There's another one I'll say though for my for a favorite pair is I have like an orange satin thong from Bodywear that I like a lot as well. But that, that makes its way back into the rotation quite a uh, you know pretty pretty early as well. So awesome. I'm of those, yeah. Bodywear makes such good satin. I don't do. know what they've got the secret sauce on satin other yeah, brands try it but no one usually gets close to body wear yeah i agree just feels so good so good on oh oh yeah it's it's a, it's definitely a favorite yeah i would hate to leave that one out so that's definitely one of my favorites as well awesome that's a really good diverse group of favorites there that's awesome so i have to ask what does your wife think of your underwear collection and like yeah um, so she probably, she rolls her eyes at it. It's not her thing. Uh, it doesn't do anything for her, but she also, you know, she loves me and understands it's something that, well, she doesn't get it. It's something that I really like and enjoy. And um, so she's, she's totally okay with it, but yeah, it's not, not something that, um, yeah, you know, if, if there's a package that comes and, and she's the one that catches it at the door or something, she'll just kind of hand it to me and roll her eyes a little bit. I've got a budget. I, you know, try to stay inside of it. <laughs> That's but, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, she's she's certainly loving and accepting, even though it's it's not her thing. So so when did you? How, it goes. how did you tell her about your love of underwear? Because I assume your underwear buying started before you met her. Correct. Yeah. I forget kind of how it came up, I, but somehow I think it kind of came up the uh, like, oh well, you know, do you wear boxers or boxer briefs? And I was like, actually. I, I kind of stuck my toe in the water with, I was like, actually, I wear bikinis. And then she was like, oh, I didn't even know that was like a possibility. And I was like, yeah, you know, I know. I know. And once it kind of got her used to that idea is when I told her, well, I, I also wear thongs as well. So, mm. so she, and she was cool with it. Good. Um, like I said, it's never really been her thing, but she's, she, yeah, it's been fine. So 
Very good. Now, it's always good to have a partner who at least accepts. Yes, totally. And doesn't be like, oh, what are you? Oh, yeah. It would be, it wouldn't be a lot of fun. It'd be pretty miserable to try to hide it. Um, so I'm glad that this is not something that I feel like I have to do, or there's not a lot of like shame around it or anything like that. If, if there is any shame, it's just because I've probably spent too much money. It's, well, it's a budget related one rather than, which is completely reasonable. We have that. We have yeah. that so much. And then I have to ask, cause we've had Patrick on for forever. who used to be on and his kids knew about his underwear and called him Tarzan. Because what he wore. <laughs> Do your kids know about the underwear? Or you know, it's a good question. I don't know. My kids are still kind of young, and so I don't hide it. It's just there in a drawer. Um, but also, I don't really advertise it, and so they probably know. They probably don't know that it's weird. If that makes sense, or that it's oh, yeah. maybe weird isn't the right word. Um, that day will probably come, and so I, like I don't. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. That's a good question. I'm not sure that they, I think it has been just kind of that way. And since I don't really advertise it, they probably just don't think about it a lot. It's normal to them. And they're kind of like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. If they see it, they're like, eh, okay, whatever. Right. Yeah. Cause Patrick's kids used to go through his underwear drawer. Um, that's funny. They still and do. As far as I know, my kids, I don't know that my kids do that. They could. Based on where our bedroom is and drawers and stuff, there's not a ton of opportunities for them to do that. But, I, you know, they very well could. I don't know. So, just curious. Yeah. I think uh, as long as people make it normal to be like, what, I can wear whatever I want to. Yeah, I think there was a time I would have been, you know, I would have tried to bury it under some t-shirts or something like that. And I think now I'm just kind of like, I, like I said, I don't advertise it. I really am conscious. I don't want my, you know, like, songs. I don't want to whale, whale tail it around people, you know, mm-hmm. but, but at the same time, like I, know, I am who I am. I'm comfortable with that. And if you're going to root through my drawer and find it, then that's kind of on you. If you didn't want to know that, it's like, mm. don't go root through people's drawers. So exactly. Exactly. That's awesome. Though. Good for you. Good for you. Thank you. So underwear really does boost confidence. We believe here at the podcast. Yeah. So do you have a, specific style you wear when you need a confidence boost or have you had an experience where wearing underwear gave you a specific boost in your confidence yeah you know i think i've gotten to the point now that so one of my favorite parts of the day is just going to the door opening it up and deciding what pair to wear that day like i i enjoy that i don't know i think i've you know been wearing nice underwear for for so long now i think that there yes the answer would have been yes to that a while ago i feel like now though it's just something i just really enjoy and i don't necessarily go okay uh, i just really need a boost of confidence i'm gonna go pick out this pair today i just really like to have the option to wear a really nice pair and whatever i'm feeling like that day and but i do think that that makes me feel good that makes me mm-hmm. feel just kind of baseline confident throughout the day so I think that, that, yeah, that's that's kind of how it works for for me now, now that I've, you know, been doing this for almost probably two decades. So That's awesome, though, that you've been wearing underwear for two decades and living your best life, which I think more guys need to do. Absolutely. And I think specifically straight guys, because many, I think, are too scared to try it because they don't want to get labeled as gay or you're not a man for wearing such things, which are both stupid answers. But, you know, that's why I like having guys like you on to share your story and share with other guys out there because we have tons of guys listening who are in the same boat as you are and they just need to hear that person, you know, tell tell them about their life and know, oh, it's not bad for me to wear underwear it's okay and other guys are doing it who are like me so that's that's the point of the podcast absolutely which, which i'm glad you found it and started listening because that's amazing uh, i'm sure we have other listeners who've done that as well because i always try to share the podcast and that's the hardest part is getting it out there for new listeners but we're working on it we're working on yeah it. yeah absolutely well, no, I, and I appreciate all the work that, that you and, and everybody else does on it. It was, it, you know, I think I we talked about this earlier, but, um, you know, it's, it's an, 
uh, loving underwear, especially as a guy, is a is interesting place to be because there's not mm-hmm. a lot of people to talk with it about, and so it can be kind of isolating. And so it, it's you know underwear is personal anyway. So you know I was pretty used to it just being a very you know personal thing that I liked. But it's it's always nice to know hey there's actually a lot of other people out there like you and. Yeah, so it's uh, I've I've really enjoyed it and appreciate the work you guys put into it. Yes, it's there. We're so much more alike, especially underwear guys, than non-underwear guys. I've met so many amazing guys through the podcast and interviewed them and had them on gay, straight, and bi. We all mm-hmm. have pretty much the same stories. Just about. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all have. It's amazing how similar they are. Yeah, I thought we'd be, oh, we're going to be so different. We're going to be so, have different stories. And then once we get into them, it's like, wait, we're really more alike than I thought we were. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So that's really gotten me very happy. And I've made a lot of straight guy friends, which I never thought I would do. Because when I started the blog, I told friends, straight guys are going to read my blog one day. And everyone (laughs) told me I was crazy. And that would not happen. And well, it did. And the podcast Absolutely. happened, and we have tons of straight guys listening. So That's great. I'm ecstatic about it. Uh, I think trying to get more straight guys on. So if you're a straight guy out there, uh, all you have to do is just contact me, and we can get you on the podcast. It's that simple. Because Rob did it. It's, yeah, exactly. It's it's easy. It's it's fun to talk underwear. So it's amazing. Not something I get to do very often. So I appreciate it. It's amazing to talk underwear. Absolutely. It is so much fun. Uh, you guys need to do it. Uh, note that if you send in the form on the website, I discovered it does not email me when the when a response comes in. Oops. So I'm going to have to get a new form because I had some that were like two months old when I finally checked it and forgot <laughs> about it. Oopsie. Sorry, guys. Um, so if you do no, it. It happens. It happens. And you're on social media, just send me a DM. Or if you're not on social media, just shoot me an email uh, and say, hey. I sent you in a form, so that way I'll know, because I did not know it did not email me. Because I'm used to forms emailing me the response and da-da-da. Right, right. Nope, not this one. This one was like, "Mm, you got to log in to check. And I'm like, this is doing me no good. So I would forget to do that all the time. I do, and I probably need to check it this week. But, you know, that's, that's just the way it goes. But come on and tell your story and share and let other guys know they're not alone. It's super easy. It's fun. And you get to talk underwear, which is the best thing ever. Um, well, in my yes, opinion, it is. Yes, it is. Opinion. So I would say tell them where they can follow you on social media, but you're not on social media. I'm not on social media. So nowhere to follow me. So if you want to get him a message, you can send it to me and I will forward it over. And don't ask for his email uh, because I will not <laughs> give it out to you people. I will forward your information to him. And then if he wants to contact you, he can contact you. If not, no. That's the way that works. I pass along all messages, and it's up to our guests to reply if they want to. Okay. So, you know, don't come back at me later and say, well, I didn't hear anything back. I'm like, well, I'm not I'm not him, so I can't tell you anything. So, so just okay. relax, people. But he's awesome. So glad to have you on today, Rob. Yeah, thanks so much. I appreciate it, Sam. Uh, we're going to have plenty of podcasts soon. Oh, my God. And go join our Patreon if you love thongs. We're going to do a thong show a month if we get 30, 30 Patreon, paid Patreon members. And I think we're up to 23 or 24. We've gotten like two or three new ones. Woohoo. We're getting there. And then 40 for the review show when the Patreon members will get to help us pick what pairs we review. So we'll do a poll or ask you guys out of. We will probably do a poll out of these, which you want us to do. So So head over there, patreon.com slash UNB blog and join. And hopefully by the time this is up, we'll have our After Dark show up. Yay. And a little more spicy, not too spicy. So people (laughs) calm down. I'm not giving you what things you said you wanted because you do not pay enough money for that. Um, (laughs) You got to pay me a lot more to hear some of that. And that's it. So have a great week, people. We will talk to you later. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening to our show. If you like what you hear, consider supporting us at Patreon at patreon.com slash UNB blog. Follow us on social media. You can follow the blog at UNB blog on Twitter and Instagram. 
read the blog at unbblog.com. Also follow me if you like art or anything else fun and underwear at unbtim on Instagram and also Twitter. Thanks for listening, and we'll have more podcasts at you very soon. Bye.